Uh, I, I think <laughs> <laughs> it was. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Most of us don't want to think about evil unless we absolutely have to. We use the word evil to label some bad behaviors and some doctors. And if you're an atheist, to say that's evil means no more than to say that's embarrassing. It's just a label for behavior we don't like that has no other source than an unfortunate synapse in a human brain. When I was an atheist, that explanation satisfied me. But as the last few years unfolded, and I zoomed out to view the bigger picture, that secular explanation of evil started to feel inadequate. I could see many disconnected people all embodying the same evil, kind of like an ocean wave where an unseen energy is only visible through the countless molecules of water all moving in unison. This unseen force of evil has become easier to spot with all that's happened. COVID, riots, masks, shots, lockdowns, whatever this is. We saw fear and social pressure being used to manipulate, coerce, and isolate people. Came from governments and businesses and from our spineless neighbors who were not only controlled themselves, but your I'm sorry, you can walk away from me right now. But also craved controlling others in the same way. It felt like almost everyone was under an evil spell. And this manipulation through fear seemed really effective on secular people who claimed to always change their mind based on the science, but were actually just always changing their mind based on the television. This is, this is extremely, extremely dangerous, dangerous to our democracy. democracy. I was shocked by how easily these secular softies were nudged into complete conformity. I felt adrift, seeking some solid moral ground. You might say I was seeking a firm foundation, some solid rock, something that doesn't change to stand on. What an odd thing to say. And then we saw governments forbidding church services and stifling Christian communities. It started to feel like a spiritual conflict, and frankly, I felt like I was on the wrong side. Did you guys ever go to Sunday school? So, and again, of course, if there's anything you want, oh, we'll edit later, of course. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We, 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 we just there should be a, a <coughs> on God. Yeah. Now, the root causes for this mess certainly run deep, but my own history makes me think of the new atheists in the 2000s. I feel terrible about my own contributions to the sales pitch back then, creating atheist media, logos, websites, and whatnot. They sold the promise of a future secular utopia where the enlightened would shed the decaying cocoon of Christianity and emerge as superior moral butterflies, all while imagined by John Lennon played on repeat. But instead of utopia, all we got was a culture overflowing with satanic rituals and imagery that encourages children to mutilate their bodies and celebrates child sacrifice. Essentially, Sodom and Gomorrah 2.0. Talk about buyer's remorse. But chill out, someone would surely reply from the pit of a stadium-sized satanic ritual. No one actually believes this Satanism stuff. They just use the imagery for art and for fun. Well, I think I've had my fill of art and fun in my Netflix queue, and it sure feels like a sneaker wave of evil just crashed over our heads. Way back in 1939, C.S. Lewis wrote, The junior devil asked Satan, What is the plan? Satan replied, Our plan is very simple. 
we will make the noise of man's world so loud that he can no longer hear the voice of God. If 1939 was noisy, what do we call today? The devil wants to use that constant noise to lull you off to sleep and run out the clock on your chance to understand your spiritual predicament and its solution found in Jesus alone. That's it. The devil knows the clock is counting down and wants to keep it so that you don't. Ephesians 6 tells us, our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. The Bible is clear that evil is more than a label. You're in a struggle that is not simply against flesh and blood. And when that darkness comes into focus, it can help you see the light of God's goodness, like through a silhouette. We need to develop our spiritual and physical strength in tandem. If we neglect our spiritual lives, that can take a toll on our physical health. And if we neglect our physical bodies, that can really damage our spiritual lives. That's why we do Bibles and Barbells. Have you ever tried to push really hard against something while not on solid ground? Have you ever tried to barbell squat in a boat? If you want to move any real weight, you need the most solid ground possible. Hebrews 13 verse 8 tells us, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. That is the firm foundation you need to stand your ground and push back against evil. Maybe you aren't yet listening for the voice of God, but just had your head shouted off by the evil of the last few years and decided it's time to stop ignoring it. That was my first step on the journey out of atheism, and it wouldn't surprise me in the slightest if it's also yours. So if you want nothing to do with this present darkness that's encroached all around us, I suggest you first consider where you're spiritually standing and figure out what it means to get to spiritual solid ground. Yeah!